Well, hi there. Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And on behalf of Alice and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious, the lovely name of Jesus Christ. The most high, Amen. most holy name. As we continue on, and for the past few weeks, mm -hmm. I don't know how, <laughs> we have been wow. looking at that model of prayer that Jesus taught the disciples in the Sermon on the Mount which we commonly call the Our Father. A lot of people call it the Lord's Prayer, but I hope that you've been watching this, you understand that this is not the Lord's Prayer. This is the church's model for prayer, all right? So we're at the point now, uh, after our previous week, where we're talking about where it says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, 13. Thank you, Lord. So before we start that, I'm just going to ask Alice if you'll pray God's blessing on our time. Yes, we do. Lord, we come before you and we just give you praise and honor and glory for who you are. And we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing and have done in this ministry. Father, we just yes, pray Lord. that this word that goes forth will touch hearts yeah. and change lives. And we know that it does. That's the power of the word. Amen. And Father, we just pray that today's word will get us closer and closer to you. Amen. Amen. All right. Matthew 6, 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Does God lead us into temptation? I mean, is that something we have to be concerned about? We have to ask him, don't, please, Lord, don't do this? No. Well, James writes in his letter, in the, in the first chapter, James 1.13, and he says, God does not tempt anyone. Okay? So is that a contradiction here? He doesn't lead us into temptation. The Word of God says, Psalm 23 says, He leads us in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Mm -hmm. That's where He leads us, in paths of righteousness. So He doesn't lead us into temptation. So we need to prayerfully search out the scriptures. That's a red flag, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Anytime you, you see what appears to be a contradiction in scripture, because it doesn't contradict, yeah, right? Never, no. It's a time to search and find out what what is there. And oftentimes it means getting out your concordance mm -hmm. and searching and looking. But God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it's worthwhile to diligently seek the Lord, all right? And, you know, Paul wrote to Timothy and says, study to show yourself approved unto God. I, I think, uh, I don't know if you know who J. Vernon McGee was. He is going to be with the Lord. He's waiting for us all there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, he was a Bible teacher, had a radio show for years. As a matter of fact, I, I actually believe it's still run. No, I okay? think they do. They still run this. But he used to say, that, that a better translation here, or a better understanding of this rendering of this verse, mm -hmm. would have been "leave us not, leave us not in te in temptation." Mm -hmm. But I want you to listen to what the Lord says. Okay, mm -hmm. His Word is Him speaking to us. Mm -hmm. It says in Hebrews chapter four. I'm going to read verses fifteen and sixteen. It says, "There, uh, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are." yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Jesus has been tempted in all things, as we are. Yes. All right? But he did not sin, yet without sin. But the Lord understands temptation. And you need to understand that temptation, being tempted, is not sin. Okay? Right. Absolutely. It, it is... Giving in to the temptation, that's sin, okay? He will not leave us in a place of temptation if we are willing. He will deliver us from that evil, that evil. The paths of righteousness that he leads us in are traveled by the few. Okay, isn't that what Jesus yes, said? Yeah. road is narrow. The path is straight and narrow. And that path leads to life. The purpose of temptation is to draw us into sin. Mm -hmm. Temptation is what Satan does to get us off the path of righteousness. And you need to think, how narrow is that narrow path? 
It's a few. I say it's like kind of like a tightrope. I mean, yeah. and, and the devil, he, he wants you off that. He wants you off that path of righteousness. And he doesn't care whether you go to the left or the right. He just wants you off it. Mm -hmm. That's why I say don't turn to the left or to That's the right, right, all right? Fix your eyes on Christ. What he wants, he wants us to be part of that crowd that is following, traveling the broad and easy way, yes. okay? Yes. That leads to destruction. Now, Satan, he has no power whatsoever. He's been disarmed. When, he, when Christ was publicly displayed upon the cross, Satan was publicly displayed as being disarmed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He has no power or authority over us. The only thing that he can do with us is he's like a con man. He comes as a thief, but he's a particular kind of thief, a con man. A con man talks you out of what is rightfully yours. He talks you into giving him what is rightfully yours. You know, you can talk about the, the, the muggers in New York City who come along and bonk you on the head and, and take $25 out of your wallet. Hardly compares to a, a Bernie Madoff yeah. who stole millions and millions and millions of dollars by convincing people that they should give it to him. Right. Okay? Because of what they would get back. Right? He has no power but the power of his lies. All right? And, he, and by the way, it's not just Satan. It's also his little minions. Yes. Okay? False prophets and false teachers. And think about what Paul wrote to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11. He said, no wonder. For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. This is why it's so incredibly important. You know, John wrote that we are to test the spirits from many false prophets of one abroad. You, you, have to be, you have to be careful what you listen to is what Jesus said. Absolutely. Okay, because Satan is going to come as disguised as an angel of light, and his ministers, his false prophets, his false teachers will do that. Mm -hmm. And what's their purpose? To get you off the path of righteousness, mm -hmm. right? Now, think about First uh, Peter, Peter 4, I'm going to read 12 and 13. It says, Beloved, do not be surprised by the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. You see, there is a purpose to God's testing us, which is different than tempting us, all right? The testing, the trials, the tribulations that, that are for the righteous, many, right? Many of the afflictions of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Those are the Lord's hope machine, right? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, think about it. That's what Paul wrote to, to uh, the Romans in Romans chapter 5. In Romans 5, I'm going to read verse 3 and 4. He said, not only this, but we exult in our tribulations, that trials, the testing, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. It's a machine. Ba -ring, ba -ring, ba -ring, yes. ba -ring, okay? And we need to have hope. Hallelujah. Our testing gives us testimonies. Amen. No testing, no testimonies. That's right. And those testimonies by which we overcome, that's the, with, the, with the blood of the Lamb, the power of the blood of the Lamb, mm -hmm. we overcome that adversary, Satan. Yes. By our testimony, the word of our testimony, because we did not love our lives, even unto death. That's what it says in Revelation. Our testing is that refiner's fire that God uses to purify us. His promise to us, this great promise, Romans 8, 29, he says, that whom he foreknew, he predestined to become conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And I've shared before, but I, I remember whether it was Michelangelo or Da Vinci, I think it was Michelangelo who carved that statue, the, the David, one of the, probably one of the most famous statues ever made. Mm -hmm. And when he was asked, how do you do this? I'm paraphrasing, I don't even speak old Italian, let alone old Italian. How do you do this? Well, this, you know, the idea, you see, what he said was, I take this block of marble and I chip away everything that's not David. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, that's exactly God's plan in our life. He is, he is in the process of making us look identical to Jesus. What he is doing with the trials, the tribulations, the testing, he is chipping away everything in our lives that doesn't look like Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you, God. Yeah. 
Think about Job. Now, Job, it says in the first chapter of Job, he was a man who was upright, fearing God, turning away from evil. He was blameless. He was righteous, right? Righteous. And yet, he still had impurities in his life. When he talks about, in Job 3.25, he said, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Mm -hmm. He had fear in his life. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Fear comes by hearing, hearing by the world. So he had a lack of faith. That's Fear is a lack of faith. Don't ever let anybody convince you of anything different. And this is why you need to be on guard against fear in your life. Yes. Right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So there was something in Job's life that was displeasing to God. That fear. Mm -hmm. So God said, hmm, I can fix that. Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Mm. Sick him. Sick him. <laughs> but yeah, if you know the, the book of Job, along the way in the 23rd chapter, he finally says, but he, God, he knows the way I take. When he has tried, when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. The purpose of testing in our lives is that refining process where God is taking the things out of our life that shouldn't be in our life. Okay? God does not lead us into temptation. But as with Job, he'll allow us to be tested for our perfection. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants. Satan is a tool in the hand of God. All right? Yeah. Satan, you have to understand something. Satan is stupid. He is rebellious. Re if you're in rebellion, I promise you, you are acting and living stupid. And if you think that sounds offensive... Go get your concordance and look up the word stupid and see what God says about people that he thinks are stupid. But he wants to snare you. Satan, in his desire to steal, kill, and destroy, has to set traps for us right. off the narrow path. Mm -hmm. He has to tempt us to get us to leave that narrow path that Jesus is leading us in. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, you know, I, I went through survival schools in the military when I was flying in the Navy, and they, they do teach you, you know, if you get if you down, and they teach you how to set little snares and traps for animals. Fast food restaurants are much better than that. Okay. We have a, an example of that just recently. Of someone we were talking with had uh, asked us to look at something that they with them, they were looking for work online, yeah, yeah. and they came across a video, and it sounded, what, it, what the person said is, it, it sounds too good to be true, but could you look at it too? And it, it was most definitely... Too uh, good to be true. Too right. good to be true, and it was that trap. It was. It was a snare. It was that snare. Well, you know, it wasn't a snare. It was a trap. No. Oh, it, it, was, a, it was the bait. The bait. Oh, in the trap. That's right, that's right. Because when you set a snare, when you set a trap, you have to bait it. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. And, and think about that. It's like, um, if you were going to try and trap me, and you set a trap, I'm walking down here, and you put a trap over there, and you've got to get me to that trap. Well, I'll be honest with you. Maybe I shouldn't confess this. Do not use asparagus. It simply won't work. He's got to bait the trap with something that is attractive to you. Yes. It's got to attract you to it, right? Yes. What's attractive to you? How does the devil... No, what's attractive to you? Well, I'm going to tell you, he doesn't read minds. Yeah. People who think that the devil can read minds don't understand. But he can hear you. Mm -hmm. And we tell him all the time what will attract us. Yes. You're confessing, oh, I wish I had this. Oh, I want that. You're, you're telling him, hmm, that's what you can bait the trap with. Yes. All right? But we're talking about a prayer here. We're talking about the model for prayer. The, that prayer to the hour mm -hmm. of Father, right? right. I want to talk about another prayer, okay? And this, will, I think, will give us a little better understanding. Mm. If you turn your Bible, and I pray that you have a Bible. Mm. Need and a pencil. That's a tool. Yes, highlighters, pencils, pens, yes. Psalm 91. I'm going to start, and I'm going to read right from the beginning. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Remember this, but deliver us from evil. These are the perilous last days that Paul wrote to Timothy about. 
in peril, you know what you need to do? You need to run into a shelter. You know, when I was a child kid, I can remember back going to school. Uh, in fact, I can remember, I'm, maybe I can't remember in the late 40s, but the early 50s. I remember this in the, through the 50s. When there was a time of great stress in the world called the Cold War. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I went to a Catholic school, and I can remember every Friday, every single Friday in the town we lived in, as in most towns across the United States, they would sound the air raid sirens mm -hmm. to test them out, and it would be the time that we, us little children, we would just hop off of our chairs, and underneath those little old wooden school desks, mm -hmm. they must have been magic, because <laughs> they could have protected you from an atomic bomb. Yeah. But that's what was going on, right? The little wooden desk is not a great shelter. Yeah. But at the same time, what was happening was a big booming business in the United States was bomb shelters. That's right. All right? Some place that when the sirens went off, if you had money and you had built a bomb shelter, you would get down yeah, in it. A shelter to get away from whatever was coming. Out in the Midwest of the United States all the time. And, you know, most people out, at least in rural areas, they have shelters mm -hmm. for tornadoes. Right. And they have tornado sirens and warnings. And they call them storm cellars. Well, is that basically the same thing? I, uh, maybe it is. I've, mm -hmm. I've never, I, although we have spent time in the Midwest, I've never been one of those farmers. Okay. But the idea is there's a place of shelter yes. when danger comes. Peril is that danger. Yes. Peril is the danger. And our Father, our God, is the shelter. Hallelujah. All right? We need to have that place that we can run into in times of trouble, in times of danger, in times of peril. That is safe. And the only safe place is the shelter of the Most High. Amen. In the palm of His hand. In the palm of His hand. Also, it says, right, in the shadow of the Almighty. One of the things, if, I don't know where you're sitting right now, but if you can look around and see, shadows tend to be close. All right? Yeah. If you don't believe this, you can read the Bible and then go read Peter Pan. You know, he was, you got to be attached to your shadow. The shadow is close. Yeah. You need to be close to the Lord. You need to not leave his side. He'll never leave you nor forsake, forsake you. But you need to make sure that you're not leaving him. Going off to the things that attract you in the natural, in the world, right? Yes, as Alice said, Jesus is our shelter, right? And the palm of God's hand Amen. is where no man can snatch you out. And verse 2, it says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. But you know what a fortress is? Yeah. This is the place of safety where God will defend you. My God in whom I trust. If you don't trust in God, you will trust in the world. Trust is faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You need to spend time in the word. You need to. We need all to be spending time in the word. Because when danger arises, you'll run to him if you don't trust in him. And you'll trust in him if you're abiding in his word, because that's what builds faith in your life. Amen. In verse 3 it says, For it is he who delivers from the snare of the trapper and the deadly pestilence. That's what I'm talking about. He's the one that will deliver you from the snare of the trapper, keep you from that snare of the trapper, and even if you go in, he'll get you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, because he is our deliverer. He will deliver us from evil. But remember, be careful about how you let Satan know what attracts you. If in Psalm 73, verse 25, it says, You only have I in heaven. You want to read it for me? Or, and you only do I desire on earth. Alice Psalm, is 75? 70, Psalm 75. 25, okay. 73, Psalm 73, verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. That's the place I want to get to. Where I can say, from the depths of my heart to the Lord, you only I desire on earth. Because when he's the only desire that you have, when he's what you truly desire, Satan can't use that to tempt you to get you off the path because he's on the path with you. Right. Right? Because your heart is filled with only him. So then out of the yes. abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And you'll only be speaking of godly things. Well, of God. But it, I want the Lord to be my only desire. And you know what it says in Psalm 30? Huh? Absolutely. And in Psalm 37, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But I promise you, I promise you, when you truly begin to delight yourself in the Lord, 
He will be the desire of your heart. He will be the thing that you desire. You and, have, and we speak of the desires. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Psalm 91, verse 4. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. Yes, it's our faith that overcomes. But our faith, it's not, a, it's not as much about our faith as it is about his faithfulness. Yes. All right. God is faithful. He watches over his word to perform it. No promise that he has promised has failed to come to pass. When you trust in that, when you believe in that, when you have faith in that, in his faithfulness, then you will be like Paul, who go read Romans chapter 8, because he was utterly convinced, he was persuaded, he says, that nothing could separate him from the love of God, and that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It will give you such boldness, because God has given us that spirit of boldness. And, and then, is it important today? Let me read the next verse. You will not be afraid of the terror of by night or the arrow that flies by day. These are times. Terror. Mm. Terror. That's one of the most common words you hear today. My goodness. There are terror attacks everywhere. Everywhere. You have no reason to be afraid of the terror by night. And you know what? You may say, well, it's day today. No. It's darkness. Yes. It's dark out in that world. It's deep darkness. Out You're the light. Mm -hmm. Out there in the world, it's darkness, it's night out in that world, and terror abounds. But you have no cause to be afraid of that terror, no. because you are protected in the palm of his hand, in the shelter, in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. God doesn't suggest, God doesn't, pro he commands that we fear not. That's right. When we fear, we sin. Psalm 97, 91 verse 7 says, the pestilence that soaks, you know, Pestilence is stalked, that's verse 6, right? Six. Pestilence is stalked by darkness. How about Ebola? How about Zika? How about all these? They're, they're there and they're coming. Yes. I think we'll see something worse, perhaps in our time, worse than the Black Plague okay. that was such a horror. In, but you know what? We have nothing to fear. Nothing. We have nothing to fear. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You have life in you. You have life eternal. There is nothing on this earth that can kill you mm -hmm. because you have already died and your life is hidden yes. with God in Christ, in, yes. in Christ Jesus. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Mm -hmm. You need to dwell in Christ Jesus. Go, go look through the New Testament. See how many times... It says that we are in Christ Jesus. He's got to be your dwelling place. And you need to dwell in him who is the word. The word made flesh who dwelt among us. Because it is that that makes you a disciple. And causes for you to know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. In these days of lies. Mm. The world abounds in lies. But you'll know the truth when you dwell in that word. When you are in Christ Jesus, the word. Mm. For he'll give you his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Well, we could talk about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. Because that was something that, right. that Satan tried to tempt him with. Actually, he wasn't tempting him with that. He was tempting him with pride. Mm. Remember, Jesus was a man. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Truly a man. And Satan knows the failings and the weaknesses of man. Yes. And pride... Hits the top of the list. Yes. So he was saying, if you're really God, prove it. Throw yourself down. Jesus said, no, no, no. You, no. you don't do that. You don't put God to the test. Mm -hmm. You don't need to put God to the test. When there's a need, he'll be there. That's right. Thirteen. You will tread upon the lions and cobra, the long, young lion and serpent. You will trample down. Jesus said, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Luke 10, 19. Do you believe this stuff? Are you a Bible-believing Christian? Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up, Alice and I grew up in New York City. And there, we didn't have to worry about snakes and scorpions very, mm -hmm. very Not much. <laughs> but then God sent us down into the jungle in Central America, and we lived out in the bush. And we had. And we got an opportunity to put the Word of God to see yes. if indeed... It's true. Because we would wake up at night and have scorpions in the bed with us. 
We encountered so many snakes, but God protected us. I mean, Alice, I would run out. I don't have enough time to tell you all of the accounts, but I, I promise you that God was there and protected us. He gave us authority over those serpents and scorpions. Because he says in verse 14, because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. It's about relationship. And he will call upon me, and I will answer him and be with him in trouble. This is about prayer. We're studying about prayer. Call upon him, and he will answer. Amen. He'll be with you in the trouble. He'll not leave you nor forsake you. He will rescue you and honor you. Calling upon the Lord. That's prayer. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Do you believe the Lord? Do you believe that he will deliver you from evil? Do you believe that you will see his salvation? Do you trust in his word? Paul wrote, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The Apostle Paul in Philippi, you know the account in Philippi, right? Go to Acts chapter 16 and, and read this. Because he disrupted business yes, yes. by casting a demon out of a little girl, right? Mm -hmm. He was beaten. With along with Silas and thrown into the deepest, darkest part of the, the, the prison. There he was. Mm -hmm. A prison. A place of horror. A place of misery. Yes. A place where the only sound you heard was men weeping and crying and wailing and moaning. Except, except, Paul was thrown into that Silas. prison. Silas was thrown into that prison. And it says around midnight, they were singing prayers. They were saying prayers and singing praises to God. Mm -hmm. They weren't moaning, they weren't groaning. Yeah. They were thanking God because they gave him thanks in all things. Do you remember that Jesus said that if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. When Paul was singing praises, when Silas was singing praises, there in the midst of the darkness of that horror of that prison, what was Jesus doing? Well, he made a promise, and he watches over his word to perform it, just like I said. Right. So when Paul was confessing him, Jesus went before the Father and said, Do you see my servant Paul? Do you see him? Jesus has emotion. He wept. He got excited. Now Jesus got excited. Yes. He got excited to see the faithfulness of Paul. So he was, he, he's, he's saying to the Father, Do you see my servant? The angels got excited. Because when Jesus gets excited, I promise you the angels get excited. They were having a hallelujah ho down up in heaven. They were jumping up and down. Hallelujah. And praying. And you know what happened then? The earth shook. Yes, it did. Heaven shook. Amen. The earth shook. And the gates, bars flew open. The, gates the chains open. fell off. <laughs> and God used that as a testimony that lasts all time. As long as the word lasts, and the word's going to last forever. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the kind of deliverance that God makes. God can deliver you. It doesn't matter how deep in the prison. It doesn't matter how dark the prison. It doesn't matter how strong the bars. It doesn't matter how strong the chains. God will shake the earth if he has to to set you free because he has made a promise to you. He will deliver you from evil. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's exciting. Have a testimony. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord God, yes. for your steadfast yes. love for us, thank for you. a love, Lord God, that knows no bounds. We thank you, Lord God, for your promise and your word that you will deliver us from evil, Lord yes, God, Jesus. that nothing shall harm us, Lord God. Lord, let us have a testimony that glorifies your name. Father, help us to be boasting in your name, in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. We praise you and thank you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Till next time. So